Welcome back from the desk here at AWS Developer Day. I'm A.M. Grabelny, a dev advocate for game day, joined by Farrah Campbell down here. I'm still here. Still I'm still here. here. You I'm haven't still left. Here. Not yet. Not yet. Usually by now, people I host with, they're gone. They're they're out. They're like, I'll never work with him again. But I will always work with you, A.M. Always. Fishing for compliments, I'll get one. Every time from Farrah. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. We've got a, a very exciting guest. Uh, I am incredibly biased uh, for this topic as well. Uh, one of my favorite topics to talk about, AWS Amplify. But Allie, please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Allie. I am the head of developer relations for North America, but previous to this, I was on the Amplify team for the last four and a half years. So I get to go back to my roots a little bit and talk about Amplify today, and I'm pretty excited about it. So you know a little bit about it. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just, Just a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and uh, Allie and I, it only took us a couple of years to figure out uh, yesterday that we were both on the Amplify team, uh, probably at the same time. Either. Yes, at yeah. the same time, right. for sure, for sure. So. There you go. There you have it. Anyway, so we're going to be talking specifically, I, I think we'll go through what? A, a little intro about what Amplify is for anybody who hasn't used it. But we're, today we're really going to be focusing in on the AI kit. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about the bigger problem before we dive into Amplify, yes. right? So I think one of the hardest parts about building AI apps is not actually the AI layer. It's integrating it into all the other stuff for your application, right? So it's having authentication. So not anybody can uh, spam your chat. It's making it so that your LLM has access to your application's data so that it can actually use that in those chat conversations or summaries or any of the other use cases that you're trying to do. And then the other part is building out the user interface. Like, yes, building out a chat app is a relatively solved problem, but it's still not something that you want to write those thousands of lines of code or whatever. So it's nice to have all of those things built in for you. And so that's why we built Amplify AI Kit. To back up a little bit into what Amplify is, it makes it easy for front end and full stack developers to build out full applications powered by AWS. And two main problems that I see it solving are first, hosting front-end applications. So Next.js apps, React apps. Um, I'm using Next.js today, but could be could be whatever front-end framework you like using. Also, the second thing is building out a backend and having authentication and storage and data and doing that all in a familiar environment for those front-end and full-stack developers. So we rebuilt Amplify this year, Amplify Gen 2, and everything is in TypeScript. So you can build out your Backend schema, all in TypeScript. Your authentication, all in TypeScript. Storage, TypeScript. So I think it's really exciting because you're writing all of your code just in one code base and one language. You're, you're talking to a big Angular fan too. So when you say TypeScript, I'm just, I'm on board uh, fully. So yeah, I that's one of my favorite things that Amplify has always kind of set out to do is, is to make the connection between a backend application and a frontend application so much more easy for the developer who's who's joining those two aspects of an application and uh when i heard you all have this ai toolkit i was like that makes a lot of sense right because yeah, you have yeah. to make those connections to the front end piece that the users are interacting with and behind the scenes it's all using amazon bedrock so you can use whatever model you want to and all of those great bedrock features so really excited to dive into the code and the app that we're going to be building you've 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 made an app for us right yes yes wow. i've made an app so this is what the front end is going to look like let's take a look here we go so it's a chat pretty pretty uh straightforward for ai apps now but you can see that there are conversation names over here and then we'll be able to have a conversation here it is a dog grooming app so my dog blair she is a golden doodle and if you all know doodles like their hair is always matted so this is a app for booking out hair appointments but instead of using forms using a conversation to do it so let's dive into the code the first thing that i'm going to add is an appointment data model this is how you add a data model in Amplify Gen 2. So this one's an appointment. We want to store our appointments actually in the database versus the LLM making them up. So 
our appointment is going to have a time associated with it. It should probably be a, a date time, but I'm doing string for the sake of making forms easier. And then I have an authorization rule and I'm allowing authenticated users. Uh, before this, I already signed into my app, so that's where there's no login screen, but this is going to make it so that you have to actually log in to access the chat. That's one of the fundamental pieces of Amplify too is, is, is login. It's very easy to build a login page with Amplify. Yes, yes. And so configuring, configuring auth on your back end looks just like this. And so if I wanted to change the email title or anything like that for when you create an account, you can do that just in this object, which is pretty straightforward as well. So within Amplify AI Kit, there are two types of AI routes. There are conversations, which are streaming multi-turn APIs. So you'd use a conversation for something like a chat user interface like we're building out. Here, I'm choosing my AI model first. So I'm using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And because it's TypeScript, when I type here, it's going to actually suggest out the different models for me, which I think is really fun. It's like a small thing that makes all the difference when you're developing. I'm, I'm going to clip this moment uh, <laughs> for the next time I have an argument with one of my team members about why we use TypeScript on our team and not yes. JavaScript. Uh, yes. And uh, thank you for that, Allie. I appreciate it. Because <laughs> <Totally. laughs> I also deeply, deeply appreciate being able to have that string automatically populated. Agreed. Agreed. And then we have the system prompt set up. And so it's acting like a friendly pet groomer who really likes things like technicolor hair color for dogs and fun haircuts and nail colors. So it's going to act all fun like that when we're interacting with it. And then I'm using tools. So mm. LLMs are really, really good at taking a large corpus of information and like summarizing it, for example, but they don't necessarily know all the real time information like the weather or which appointments a booking tool is going to have. So in this case, whenever somebody asks about appointment times, instead of the LLM hallucinating something, it's actually going to hit my appointments and it's going to query them for me and say 4 p.m. 10 p.m. and 9 a.m. are the appointment times available, and it's going to find that through my data model. So we say list all available appointments and list them whenever I ask for an appointment, and I'll configure that on my front end as well. I notice, Ali, too, just I, I keep interrupting you. I'm sorry, yeah. but uh, you're able then to also, the operation is list. That means that the uh, the chat model is not going to be able to delete or update uh, any of these resources. Yeah, 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 which yeah. Is great. Exactly, exactly. So the second type of route that we have is a generation route. So instead of having a conversation where it goes back and forth and the conversation is stored in DynamoDB, in this case, this is for taking information and generating some content based off of it. So in this case, I want to look at the information in a conversation and then create a title for it, which I think is a very common use case, right? Yeah. Um, you see like the Claude interface doing that. So I have a system prompt set up here as well. And whenever I pass it content, it's going to create a description, descriptive name for my conversation. So now my backend is all built out. The generation is that second type that you mentioned, right? The chat was the first one. Yep. We saw that with that interaction above. And now you're using generation, which is the second type. Yep, yeah? exactly. Okay. Exactly. So we have both a conversation and a generation. Okay. Then on my front end, the first thing that I'm going to use is a React hook, which is going to allow us to hook into our conversation. Um, so if you're a React developer, all this is going to look pretty familiar. And uh, we have React components for these different use cases, which I think is pretty pretty cool as well. And if you want to use something totally custom, you don't have to use the components. You can just use the hooks by themselves. Is there right. any specific scenarios where you would choose one over the other? 
That's a good question. So I think if you wanted to have a very custom looking conversation that you're starting from absolute scratch, you would want to build it yourself and just use the React hooks instead. But if instead you're like, I want them to write that first thousand lines of code or whatever for me and have that chat user face set up, I would definitely use the pre-built component because yeah, a chat interface isn't like the most complex thing in the world, but then you like think about it and you're like, oh, there's so many little things that you have to implement for it. It ends up being a lot. So I, I use it basically all the time. Yeah, it sounds like that's what I'd be using too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to comment back in this AI conversation here. And this is that React component that's going to set up the conversation on my front end. And let's talk about what it looks like now. Okay, so I want an appointment for my dog, Blair, who is a golden doodle. Is, is Blair getting a full makeover? She needs it. She needs it. She actually got shaved this week. <laughs> the <laughs> Seattle rain makes her hair kind of mad up a little bit. So it's going to ask me more questions about Blair and what type of grooming we're looking for. And if I go back to my code, let's talk about some of the features that are built out here. So the first one is this handle send message. And so the first time that we send a message, you can see that a title is generated. Mm -hmm. So maybe this one I need more conversation to happen, but you can see that some of these like the appointment booking request and the dog grooming schedule, those were generated based off of this information in the conversation. And I set that up again, using that generation route. I set up custom avatars, so it's me and Blair talking to one another instead of uh, two gray placeholders. And you could set this up to be programmatic too, so you're using the image of your actual user instead of just like hard coding the image link. So that's the custom avatars. You could, probably saw when I was typing in that the first message was a card that said, just help tell me about your pet and their grooming needs so that I had some sort of prompt to get me started in the conversation. So that was there as well. But I think the coolest part is that we have built in generative UI. And what that means is that um, when I want certain things in my conversation, it's going to dynamically know based off of the description that I have here, when to render out a user interface component. So if I go back and say, what are the appointment times? And and Ali, as you're doing that, we have a question from chat, which I think is a great opportunity to shout out one of my favorite documentation sites in all of AWS. But the question is, is there a list of all the resource types you can use in uh what you were showing earlier, the resource.ts file. Yeah. Yes, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So docs.amplify.aws slash AI will have all of the information. And I'm very excited about that URL. I, I think it's a fun and memorable one. So docs.amplify.aws slash AI. So you can see now that when I'm in this chat UI, it knew that I was asking for appointment times and it rendered out buttons for each of the appointment times that I had in my database. So we're using both generative UI and tools in this example. So let's talk about both. So first off, based off of this description, it knows that when I want appointments to render, it should use the button user interface that I'm defining right here instead of just the default chat paragraph or whatever. So I could set this up to be like a travel listing app and have cards for each of the different options. I could even make it a form. So I could make it so that when I click on one of these buttons, the appointment is actually logged and booked. So I think that's that's pretty cool that it's not just a static chat that only has one visual. Instead, you can really make it custom. And not only that, but these appointments are being queried from my database using that tool that I defined. 
So when I define this tool, data tool, I said that if I'm looking for appointments, look at my database instead of just making up times. Yeah, you don't want like the 3 a.m. because nobody's going to be there and that wouldn't be a good experience. Yeah, you know? yeah it's not available. I'm not <laughs> open that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not coming in. <laughs> yes, yes, totally. So then um, it, it also knows to do that. So those appointment times are actually from my database instead of being from scratch, which I think is pretty cool. What kind of scalability and security features are enabled, I mean, to make these production ready? Do you know? Yeah. So within Amplify, everything behind the scenes is built with the AWS services that you might know and love. So the data is all backed by Amazon DynamoDB. It has an AWS AppSync GraphQL layer on top of it. So it makes the API a little bit easier to use. The authentication is backed by Amazon Cognito. The storage is based on Amazon S3. So same things. And the other really cool thing is that Amplify Gen 2, this new TypeScript version that we've been talking about, is built on top of the CDK. So if I was like, okay, I want to do something really custom, like, you know, increase default limit sizes or something like that, I can do that just in CDK code, and it's pretty easy to implement that. The other thing that I can do is if I'm like, oh, I want to add a resource that isn't natively um, supported by Amplify, I can do that with a couple lines of CDK code as well. So it's all built into the same ecosystem. And so Amplify has these really nice abstractions for the use cases we see developers implementing most. And we get those from conversations with folks like you all. And also, if you have some custom use case, you're not locked into the abstraction. You can very easily go into that CDK layer and implement exactly what your business needs. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think that for me, like one of the one of the first times when I was using Amplify where it dawned on me, like this is super powerful was, you know, it went in, set up Cognito for me. I had a REST API that I was creating and all of a sudden it made the connection for me between that REST API and the Cognito auth to accept, you know, the the tokens coming from the users that were logging in as as you know from my front end application hitting that rest api instead of me having to go and set all that up which i could do right there's nothing stopping me from doing that outside of amplify and using it but it's just a nice shortcut yeah 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 i think authorization is a big thing oh, as well yeah. that you can have authorization rules on your data models and build that out very easily so in this case i'm making it so that only authenticated users can see the appointment times, but I could also make this so that only owners could see it. So only somebody who made an appointment could view it, or we could even restrict different actions. So certain authenticated members could create, but anybody could read. Um, we have time. So I'll actually show you what the login experience looks like as well. So in order to get authentication, you can use this authenticator component in React. And I think at the beginning, I did end up showing the authentication on the back end. So just like a couple lines of TypeScript there. But we also have this authenticator component. And all that you need to do is import it, wrap it around whatever you want to gate the auth with authentication. And then you get this full sign in, sign up flow. It's going to confirm your password and send you an email to confirm it as well. I love it. Well, yeah. we got to run though, Allie, but I think, uh, would you send people to the docs? Docs are my favorite resource for sure. Go. go check out the good, docs. And they're good docs too. They're some of the best, my opinion. Cool. Go check them out. We will be right back with more. Thank you, Allie. Thank you.